I woke up again today, man, so I can't complain. It happens to be my birthday, too, so, you know. Is it your birthday today? 51, man, Looking, still looking sexy. Oh, man, well, happy birthday. Happy Appreciate birthday, and, and you're spending it with me. Yeah, I don't feel right about this. I don't Isn't feel all right. You, surely you have better things to do on your birthday than speak with me. Man, at my age, birthdays are just another day, you know. They're not happy anymore. They're just birthdays. Dude, I feel you. I'm 48. I just turned 48 back in July. So, yeah, you know, it's just another day. No big deal. But uh, I know this is the first chance we've had to talk. We've never even met before, even though I've seen saliva. But it was uh, at a point in time when you weren't with them. But um, even though it's been a minute, you guys, I I'm assuming you guys had to be close. So I just want to offer my condolences about Wayne. I know it's been a few months, but uh, I can only, I mean, you guys were brothers and such a, a huge part of your lives, you know, doing what you did with saliva. Um, how have you been doing with all that? Good, man. Me and Wayne were, you know, really, really close. Yeah. And uh, we both spent more time together than we did with our families, you know. Cause yeah, right. Me and him were the last two standing of the, you know, the original lineup. Right. Um, but yeah, man, crazy. You, you know? talk about age, you know, and I mean, it's like he wasn't old, man. I mean, he was he, he was young, you know, by today's standards, he's young. You know? Yeah, for sure. For so, sure. I mean, you think about stuff like that happening, you're like, no, that doesn't happen to people our age, you know? I mean, like, that happens to people that are much, much older, you know? But uh, Yeah, it puts a perspective on, uh, you know, all of our mortality kind of thing. Makes you kind of think a little bit. Hence you know? why, you know, you're just happy that you woke up this morning. And, uh, you know, obviously you moved on from saliva a few years ago, but I mean, I'm thinking to myself, what could make me want to walk away from something that, you know, has been so amazing in the course of my professional life and the idea of being able to play with my own sons, that would do it. I mean, that would be the one thing that would definitely make me do it. And I mean, I can only imagine the kind of pride you have as a father, you know, getting to watch both your sons, you know, become really talented musicians from what I've seen. So before I get too far off the rails here, Paul, um, everybody, welcome back to Rock Titan. And as you can already see, uh, you know, I am joined by Paul Crosby. You know him very well from being you know, the drummer for Saliva during all the best years they ever had, you know, massive, massive hits that have been featured in some massive movie franchises and yeah. uh, just some really cool stuff. And he's got a brand new band that just started a couple years ago. They had their debut album come out last year, Bloodwork. And uh, so Paul Crosby is in a band with his sons, Sean and Zach. And uh, yeah, Cold Words. And they have a brand new single out right now. And uh, Bad News. And that's on video. You guys can go check that out. We're going to have all the links to everything here. And if you enjoy this podcast between Paul and myself, which I'm sure you will, show us a little bit of love and subscribe so you can see all the other awesome interviews we've had over the last few weeks with the likes of like Kevin Martin from Candlebox and Gus G from Firewind. We got all kinds of good stuff out there. But uh, with all that being said, how, how are things going with Cowards, man? You got to be pretty excited about the development. Pretty pumped, man. And, and like you said, just the fact that I get to be in a band with my sons is makes it all worthwhile for me. I was at, definitely at a point uh, where traveling and, you know, touring and, and, and all of that, like, you know, with saliva and everything, it, it kind of it did. It felt started feeling like a job. It didn't feel like you know it used to where you know back in the day when i would see tour dates pop up i would get excited and count down the days and right. then it was kind of getting to the point to where i was like dreading the days like oh man mm. 10 more days and i gotta go back on the road you know i love those guys we're all still really close and good friends and all that stuff um it just kind of ran its course for me um but before that you know i was already not really happy being on the road again you know at that time but then the development with being in a band with my son started happening and progressing and that kind of nudged more the decision of stepping away you know um so i wouldn't i honestly wouldn't want to be in another band if i weren't in in this band with my sons i probably wouldn't be in a band um right i would just be doing my my band management company and okay. and kind of riding it out 
What is the name of your band management company? It's PCM, Paul Crosby Management. Okay. All right. Now, how many bands are you actively managing right now, other than your own, obviously? My own. Um, in some uh, in some facet, probably eight or so. Oh, wow. My band and, and, you know, and, and some of the bands on my roster, it's all different levels. Some of them sure. are at higher levels, and some of them we're trying to develop. Some of them are, you know, trying to develop and break. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun. I love it. It's my passion. And I get to stay home and work from home. And I still get to work in music and try to help some um, newer, younger bands try to experience some of the success and the, the stuff that I got to witness, you know? Yeah, I think that's so cool because, I mean, not only do you bring your tremendous, you know, drumming chops to the table, but again, you've had so much success as a musician, success that so many musicians out there can't even fathom. So you bring that business side, that experience side, you know, that you've got to be prepared for in all facets. Otherwise, you just kind of crash and burn. Um, but one of the things I'm curious about, because you, you were saying how you would start dreading when you saw those tour dates come up. And you know how stressful it can be in this professional music world. I guess, did you have any reservations then about your sons going down a similar path? Or are you just so confident in the kind of parent that you've been, as well as the experience that you have that you can impart on them so that they won't necessarily have to experience things the way you did? Um, well, here's the thing about it, you know. For me, um, saliva's best days are are behind them, in sure. my opinion. Yeah. Um, you That's know, right. the big hits and and the whole industry has changed. You know, um, but to be relevant, you know, my my sons are young enough to actually be relevant again. So th they actually have a real shot at um, it going somewhere, and then them taking the ride. Whereas I'm at the end of the ride with with saliva and right. that whole thing. You know, sure. Um, so. That I think you know they have a pretty good shot at, at success in being uh, relevant because of they're younger and they kind of get what's hip now and stuff like that. Um, they they're they're pretty nifty. They got good jobs and stuff too. I mean they're they're good. they're being way smarter about it than I was. I was just like cash the chips in. We're going for it, you know. Yeah, right. But um, also having me steer the ship um, helps keep them from making mistakes and stuff like that and kind of keep them in the safe zone a little bit, kind of see how things play out. And if things progress and take off, then we'll figure it out from there. Right on, right on. That's a good way to look at it. That's a good way to look at it, Paul. So for, for Sean and Zach getting into music, was this something where you think it was just like in their DNA and it was something that they just organically grew into themselves or would you say that because of your experience and and you being a professional musician that they saw you know what daddy was doing and they wanted to be like their dad did you see it more like so was it more organic in them like just inherent or do you think you had something to actually do with it you know what i mean i can tell you this i never when they were young they were little i'm sorry um i never pushed it on them I just did my thing, and I I think um, they had that bug from the time they were little, and and I'm I'm sure seeing their dad touring the world and on TV and movies and all that stuff probably made them curious about it. Okay, but it's like anything else; they could have they could have lost that curiosity and said whatever. It's a fat a phase, but they stuck with it and they developed their own stuff on their own and. Um, I, I do remember one point when Sean was probably about 10, I, I I bought him a drum set and I sent it to him because I was like, you know, maybe he'll be a drummer. And he, he played with it for a while, but then he lost interest in that because he figured out uh, you get more attention from, you know, from females and other people if you're up front playing a guitar, holding a microphone. So, um, so that didn't stick. That was my one attempt at trying to coerce and it didn't work. So I just kind of stepped back and, if they asked me for musical equipment, I would make sure they had it and right kind of taught them how to record and stuff when they were really little. And they've kind of just morphed into their own thing. Right. Now, which one of your sons has been handling the bulk load of the vocals? Is that is that Zach or is that Sean? Honestly, both of them. But uh, I would say Zach more. So. Okay. So he's uh, the one I've seen in most of the videos then. 
Yeah, well, they're both in the videos. Um, Sean, Sean usually he he's the one that Sean is the one that plays guitar as well. This right, series. okay. Um, and Sean a lot of the times handles like uh the more screamy hardcore vocals, and gotcha. Zach is the one that's more melodic and yep. sings. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Where does he get his vocal chops, man? Is that from uh, his mother or from you? Is, I, is... I, I guess so. Probably his mom. Um, I, I definitely not. But you don't want to hear me sing. If I do, <laughs> my dogs get all mad and start howling and trying to scratch at the door to get out. So I'm oh. good at writing lyrics. I'm just not good at performing them. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, it, it's interesting, Paul, because, you know, just checking out your bio with, uh, you know, Cold Words. Cold Words, everybody, is the new band that Paul Crosby is in with his boys. And again, go check out these links. Go check out the music that they have out there so far because they got blood work that already came out last year. So you can go check that out and we'll have the link for that. But uh, they got their uh, brand new single, Bad News, that's out right now for a pending EP. And it looks like you guys had some pretty significant success right out of the gate, man. I mean, I've, I've seen some bands that got a lot of talent and they don't get the kind of attention that you guys got so quickly. And I mean, I'm talking with the videos on YouTube with the hundreds of thousands of views that they got. And then you've got, you know, well over a million streams on Spotify, like you were saying. Um, anything in particular that you can attribute that success to so early on? Um, I can tell you like this. I really don't think uh, the bulk of it has to do with the fact that I was the drummer in Saliva. I think more so, well, there's a couple of factors. One, we have a really good record label who uh -huh. who invests in our promotions and, 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 and has our, you know, supports us. Okay. Secondly, it comes more so from my knowledge of the business and my contacts. Um, so I know the right people to hire. I know the, you know, kind of the what to do and what not to do. So I think that attributes to, well, and, and look, and, and I'm not just saying this because it's my band and my sons are in it. I think the music is really, really good and it translates well and people like the music. You got to have that too, or it's not going to go very far. But as far as um, all the action, it's uh, using my contacts, knowing who to hire, knowing who not to hire um, and having a supportive record label that's willing to put money in the right places to help break you. Um, and then also having good music. So, right on. um, yeah. Now, because you've had so much success in the past and your sons have watched you have that success, are there any particular expectations that you have for Cold Words? Any expectations that I have for this band have already been met as far as I'm concerned. Right on. Because um, our original goal, even the boys, was to um, write some songs together as father and sons mm. and just release them on our own. And we didn't really even care if anybody streamed them or watched them, watched the videos or anything. It was just, we're just going to do this. That's father and sons. And we have far surpassed that and people actually like the stuff and it's, it's doing very well and we're getting good chart action and, and, um, and cool podcasts and you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, man. So the expectations for us have already been met. Anything at this point on is, is a bonus and we're, we're gracious for it. I mean, obviously we want this thing to blow up and world domination and be on all these big <laughs> tours and we want all that stuff. I mean, we, we're not setting out for it, but we would definitely love that to happen. But like I said, at this point, all of our goals have been met and we're just taking the ride. That's so cool, man. And I think that is just like my daughter's into music and I, I dabble beyond just being a media personality in the music space. I, I do enjoy, you know, singing in the shower and in a car, you know, but, uh, but my daughter, she, she is actually going to school to be a music teacher. So that's what she loves to do. And, uh, she has fun with it. And I mean, I, and we've been talking about doing like a collaboration together for a long, long time, but we've only been talking about it. We've never done anything like that. So the fact that you're doing that with your sons, I think is the coolest thing in the world. Like, you know, like for me, I get to go golfing with my dad or I'll go hunting, fishing with him. That's not the same thing as writing some killer music. I mean, that's yeah. just, that. that's, 
that's just a whole new ballpark that I, I can't even imagine. Now, I do know that there are some other artists out there um, that have incorporated their kids into their musical lives, into their careers. Like, you know, with uh, Alice Cooper, he's got his daughter Calico. And of course, his wife has been a part of his stage, you know, act for ever. But uh, Calico in her own right is such a tremendous musician. So I know that they've got that going on. And uh, with Jeff Tate, you know, from Queensryche, um, you know, he's got a great solo career going now, but his daughter, she has her own band and she's been involved, you know, she'd like make appearances with him on stage and stuff like that and sing some of the old, you know, catalog of Queensryche songs, which I just, as a parent with your kid up there, like sharing your passion, I, I just think that's the coolest damn thing in the world, man. So I can only imagine how you feel and congratulations to you for it. And I really do hope that you and your boys have, you know, all that success you're looking for. Now, that being said, Bad News is a single off a pending EP and you just had your, you know, debut album last year. Do we have an idea of when to expect this new EP? Um, yeah, the EP is also going to be called Bad News. So this is the title track from right the EP. On. Okay. There's going to be, as of right now, the plan is to have five songs on the EP. We're going to release several singles first, which is kind of the new way to do things, and then release the EP as a whole, and those songs will merge on there. Um, so at this rate, by releasing some singles first, it's probably going to be first quarter of 2024 before the actual full EP drops. Okay. Because, you know, each single cycle on average is a couple of months, you know, so we'll be dropping a single every couple of months. I mean, we'll ride it out. If bad news takes off and it's st still, still has momentum, we'll push it back a little bit for the next single, but you know, um, but yeah, so it'll be early 2024 spring of 2024. I think the full EP will be, will be ready to rock. All right. That's very cool. That's very cool. Now, uh, I know you got to get going making your media rounds and whatnot, but, uh, you know, so just some parting thoughts, some ideas, uh, touring, touring, you know, what are we, I mean, you've toured with, obviously you've been in a huge band yourself, but with other acts, I mean, you've played with freaking everybody, man. So is there anything in particular you have on the horizon? Are there any bands that you would like to revisit with Cold Words, you know, and, and tour with as you had done with Saliva? Oh, sure. Absolutely, man. I, I mean, honestly, right now, I would love for us to tour with um, From Ashes to New, Papa oh, yeah. Roach, Falling yeah. in Reverse, Breaking Benjamin, all of those bands. And a lot of those bands I'd played with in the past with Saliva at, in some form or fashion. Um, but yeah. Um, We've uh, we've done a few shows this year, earlier this year, uh, festival, club show. We're we're planning on doing a few more this year, and then next year we're hoping to hit all the festivals. And, and we are already talking to some uh, other bands, agents, about possibly getting on some national tours next year. So we'll see what happens, man. Very, very cool. Well, Paul, man, it has been awesome hanging out with you. And congratulations, you know, on the success you've had with Cold Words and having the opportunity to play with your boys, man. I think that, yeah, I call them boys because I'm an old man myself, but the young men that they are, the fine young men, you know, I'm so glad that you have the opportunity to share, you know, your time with them now. And I mean, oh, that, that's just incredible. So again, everybody, we're here with Paul Crosby and uh, his band Cold Words. We got all the links here. Go check them out absolutely awesome stuff and uh we're gonna look forward to just tracking the, the 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 success that i have absolutely no doubt is headed your way and uh thanks man i just appreciate you joining me thanks for having me i really appreciate it yeah man you got it all right everybody i'm scotty J. you are watching rock titan we're out